Okay. My name is Mike Fitzgerald. Um, I'm a proud resident of Tinley Park. I love it here. I plan on staying here for the rest of my life. As I tell my wife, I plan on going out of my house on Ridgeland feet first, but the corners when I leave, okay? I don't like when, but well, the only thing I'm going to say is here, Mr. Petrino, if, I didn't, if I'm not mistaken, when you stood up here, you said, what I'm hearing a lot of from all these arguments, and it was abundantly clear, but everybody that stood up and talked was, was there's holes and problems with the legacy code. You stood right here, and you said, what I'm hearing is a lot of problems with the people that will go into your development, okay? How dare you have the audacity to stand up here yeah, yeah. and tell us how we feel when you don't even know who we are? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So I'm going to tell you right now, that's not how I feel. My problem, and what everybody's seen on the, on the uh, Facebook page that we've started and ran, is the problem with how the government got this running. That's it. So don't come here and tell us that that's how we are and that's what we feel. Thank you. Don Cuba, thanks for calling me out of the hall. Um, everybody here has given arguments on the codes, why this building and this project should not go through. That's not my area of expertise. I'm more of a numbers guy. My question is this, if there's one building going up with 47 apartments, according to the gentleman here building it, there's another seven, I think, that are gonna go up. Do the math, that's about 326 apartments. I don't know where that came from, yeah, quite uh, frankly. The drawing. I think that said from the drawing that there's, that there's this so proposal a picture, has... Ms. Conley's plan actually has a picture that actually shows specifically with the roundabout that's no longer going to happen because of public opinion. But also it shows uh, seven more buildings that would be at that corner. So in other if, words, another thing's going to get passed that probably has other stuff stuck on it so nobody will know what's passed. Exhibit four in the pamphlet. But then there will be more buildings. Let's say, let's say there's not seven more buildings, there's just one. So you have 47 people, 47 families going in who are going to use the schools, the police, the fire, and all the utilities in Tilly Park, all the services, which means our tax has to go up, our property tax has to go up to pay for this because this is low-income families that are not going to be paying taxes. So times that by seven, do the math, there's about 326 more students that would be going into our schools, and you told me somehow you're doing this to keep the school tax dollar down. I don't understand the math. These are taxable properties. Not by the people living in them. <laughs> <laughs> if you rent an apartment, you pay property tax? Property tax aren't the tenants, they're the landlords. Correct. So they will have a tax burden to pay. But the nonprofit organization has a tax burden? It isn't. This is not a tax-free organization that will be running it. It's owned by a bunch of private investors. They are responsible for taxes, just like you and I. Are we allowed uh, transparency to see who the private investors are? I, uh, Mr. Petroni can answer that question better than I. No? No, actually. No, uh, so there's no transparency. Thank you. Uh, we're private. Oops. We're a private business, sir. As a private business, you can go ask the restaurants in town to show their tax returns you like and see if the owners will do that, sir. There's no difference from us from a private citizen that owns a corporation that's going to run a business. It's, it's private. But we are a nonprofit. We're a nonprofit and our audited financials, they are audited. So I'd be happy to provide a set of audited financials to look at the organization, Good. which rolls up all of the entities that we have that Perfect. are for-profit entities. Perfect. And you'll see that. And it's with the state of Ohio that we actually file these with and everything else. But to the extent of... Then who's paying the dollars to build this to, to the first question you asked about the structure, it's a for-profit limited partnership, and under the laws of assessments, we would be assessed under the income approach. The income approach is based of your assessor's rules, they're very prescribed, and we'll pay the property tax at the end of the day of whatever that tends to be. I'm sorry, what was your other question? Okay, that's good. So then you're telling me that uh, the property taxes should not go up at all to pay for any additional services that they use because they'll be paying for it. Great. Right, Thank right. you. Let's have that in writing. Uh, there, was, there was an email, there was a press release sent out by the city that actually said that the expected tax revenue was $80,000. Is that the case? I want to again, I'll defer to the is, is it $80,000 is the expected tax revenue? We comped all of the apartment complexes in the community and we came up with an average number of about $1,700 per unit, which is what other comparable communities are paying in the community, so therefore we assumed in our assumptions without going to the assessor that it's around $80,000 per unit. Okay, sir. So I'm going to link together some logic here, but first of all, no one in this room pays $1,700.
My taxes go up. Secondly, let's just take the mean, let's just take a mean of $6,000. Let's just say, luckily, all of us were paying $6,000. That would be $282,000 for the $80,000 equivalent of what they're paying. 47 families, if they were paying the $6,000 mean that the rest of us were, that's what it would be. My son, when his card goes out for lunch, I refill it. Here is a, an important thing. There is an ongoing subsidy. Big important designation. In Tinley Park, this is a, a, a city with a big heart, and I absolutely think it's appalling that someone would come here and say this. We already meet the designation set forth by the city, we are set forth by the state. We exceed it. Okay, so to come here and say that we are not a generous community committed to helping other people is quite simple. It's not a To add to it, okay. Yeah, so, so the, the, the one thing about this is the other people have actually fed a lot of information to me, Mayor Seaman, and they've asked me to actually make sure that that information gets communicated in an effective, official way. So, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. So, the, the, the $282,000 equivalency based on a $6,000, okay, w this would indicate that there's an ongoing subsidy that will occur. And everybody needs to understand that. This is not simply about this. It will keep going on in perpetuity. The second thing is, don't let anyone shame you into thinking that you are not doing your part. As a community, we do more than our part, and we always will. Okay? This is nonsense that someone would come here and make us feel bad. We already have a lot of affordable housing in Tinley Park today. Yes, we do. Yep. Make our, uh, Trustee Vandenberg gave us some really great stats earlier about the amount of... of uh, Tinley Park residents that already represent that threshold. So, the, and, and have we ever balked about making sure that children have lunches in schools? Never. Have we ever complained about that as a community? No, never. So for them to come here and try and make this a grandstand on the fact that we're not prepared to help our fellow citizens is quite honestly garbage.